Well, good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the Ambassador Baptist Church Wednesday night Bible study. We are doing this live stream uh, due to the mandate from our president and our governor. Uh, we are still not holding in service or in house services, and so we're doing an online uh, streaming for those that have Facebook. And then once we are done with that, we will uh, upload it to our YouTube uh, page. And so if you cannot get uh, Facebook or if you have someone that would like to watch the services but can't get Facebook, if you will have them go to uh, www.youtube.com and in the search put Ambassador Baptist Church Weatherford, Texas, that will pull up our channel that we have and they'll be able to watch the services at their convenience. And so uh, we hope that you'll do that. Uh, tonight, while we're waiting for folks to get on here, we're going to share some of our prayer requests. Good to see Miss Mary Kennedy, uh, or, excuse me, Karen uh, Wood and Rachel Wood, and my wife are here. Good to see you folks on tonight. Uh, a couple of requests. Randy Wilson's uh, aunt uh, took a fall, and they put her in rehab to help her from her fall, and uh, she ended up with the coronavirus because there were several nurses and patients in the facility and then she passed away so please be praying for randy wilson's family uh, during this time of loss hello miss jesse good to have you with us tonight also larry hendrix is still going through his uh, radiation uh, treatment so please continue to pray for him that the side effects will not be bad uh, for him good evening robert good to have you with us this evening uh, then one of our young ladies, Tasha, uh, has had cancer and it has spread to her lungs. We ask that you please continue to pray for Tasha. Uh, she's trying to get into a uh, clinic in Houston, a cancer center. Uh, but since that time of trying to do that, this whole pandemic uh, has hit. And so uh, not exactly sure when she's going to be able to have that taken care of. And then Miss Mary Kennedy's um, brother, David, fell and broke his foot, and so pray that that will continue to heal well. Uh, Miss Rachel is back online with her classes, and so we like to pray for Miss Rachel that she'll do well, and uh, she works toward graduating. Uh, she's already received a job offer and looking forward uh, to graduating and starting her career. And then her stepdad uh, fell, and uh, when he caught himself, he tore some tendons uh, in his arm, and so he's facing uh, some type of a surgery, uh, ahead down the road so please pray for him as well and then we need to pray for all the folks that have lost their jobs uh, all the folks and the families that are struggling uh, we need to pray for our president uh, our country our leaders uh, we need to pray for uh, folks who have this coronavirus uh, I'm happy to report uh, one of my pastor friends and his wife that had it uh, have gotten uh, recovered from it and now they are uh, at home uh, like the rest of us uh, in isolation um, but they have recovered from that and are doing much better so uh, we praise the Lord for that uh, we're glad that you're with us tonight and uh, we've been studying in the book of Revelation uh, for the last several weeks if not months uh, but for the last several weeks we've been studying uh, Revelation chapter 4 and Revelation chapter 5 and in chapter 4 verse 1 uh, John who represents the church uh, was caught up through an open door in heaven and was taken into the throne room of God and uh, that's what we call the rapture and we look forward to that event taking place I believe that's the next event on God's calendar it could happen at any moment and so we need to be sure that we are saved and ready to go to heaven uh, but for the last several weeks now we've been in the throne room of God uh, we've looked at the four beasts that represent all of created life we've looked at the 24 elders that represent uh, the redeemed of God and uh, what they're doing up in heaven uh, and uh, what we will be doing in heaven when we get there and so last week we started in chapter 5 verses 8 through 14 and we talked about the fact that in heaven there is going to be a lot of praising a lot of singing and there's going to be music and our point, first point last week was the singers of heaven. Verse number 8 of chapter 5, it says, And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And so I've always enjoyed listening to the harp. 
It looks like one of these days when I get to heaven, I'll be playing a harp and making music and, and uh, singing and praising before the Lord. And so we identified, first of all, the singers, uh, the four beasts, as I said a moment ago, that represent uh, all of uh, created life. And the 20 and 4 elders, which represents every one of God's redeemed. Uh, if you're saved, you're one of those. And then secondly, we saw the involvement of the singers. And it's exactly what we've been saying all along. Uh, we are going to be on our faces, bowed down before uh, God and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. And we're going to be offering Him all of our love and all of our praise and all of our worship. Uh, and so really, uh, we ought to be practicing that down here uh, because we're going to spend an eternity in doing it in heaven. And then thirdly, we looked at the instruments of the singers. Uh, first of all, we saw in verse 8 that they have harps, uh, certain items. There's going to be other instruments up there that we will see later on as we study. But these were used to worship the Lord. Uh, there were instruments of praise, there were instruments of prophecy, and there were instruments of prayer. And so we're going to be uh, rejoicing and bowing down and, and having a wonderful time in heaven. Then we notice, secondly, the subject of heaven's songs. Verses 9 and 10, the Bible says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And so we found out that uh, the person that uh, is the subject in heaven is obviously the Lamb of God that was slain, uh, that shed his blood for our sins, that redeemed us back to God. And if you're a child of God, you're saved today. You've been redeemed. You've been washed in the blood. Uh, and notice it says, out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. That means there's not a soul today that cannot come and repent of their sins and invite the Lord Jesus Christ to save them that he won't save. Then verse 10 says, And hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Now when the Lord comes back, and we'll see this later on in our study, but when the Lord comes back during the thousand year millennium, you and I are going to reign with him on this earth. And so they sing about the person of the Lamb. Of course, that is the one that is worthy. Verse 9 says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou are worthy. If you remember earlier in our study, uh, we were looking in heaven for someone that was worthy to open the seals on the book. And we found out that the Lamb of God uh, that was slain from the foundation of the world was worthy to open that book. And then we saw that we sing about the passion of the Lamb. Uh, they sung a new song. Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain. Uh, listen, Jesus Christ came to this earth willingly. Uh, he died for our sins willingly. No one twisted his arm. Uh, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and his only begotten son loved us so much that he freely gave his life and made that sacrifice for you and I and died uh, on Calvary's cross and shed his blood, uh, the only thing today that can take away our sin. And so we're grateful and thankful for uh, the person of the Lamb and for the passion that he had uh, be, to be willing to come. Now tonight we pick up our last point, and that's the, the scope of heaven's sweet songs. We're going to be looking at verses 11 through 14. Uh, when heaven takes up a refrain, and when it begins to praise the Lamb of all creation, and when they blend their voices together, uh, it's going to be some kind of sound. Uh, I want us to look at three different uh, people tonight that are going to be doing the praising. Number one, celestial beings praise the Lamb. Uh, verse number 11 and 12. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beast and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and and blessing. Can you imagine that? 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. That is going to be some 
kind of choir. And you notice it also said the beast and the elders, uh, the representing uh, all the redeemed. Uh, John tries to tell us how many angels uh, begin to praise the Lord, but uh, it was a number too great for him to fathom. Uh, 10,000 in his day was the largest number known to the Greeks. And so John says it's as many as you can imagine times uh, that many again and many thousands and more besides that. And so uh, it, it's going to be some kind of choir. Now, what are these angels doing? Well, they are praising their creator. Uh, you notice in verse number 9, it says that the, the, the redeemed ones, they sung a new song. But here in verse 12, it talks about the angels that they say. Uh, I can't think of a verse in the Bible uh, that says anything about angels singing. Uh, every time that they praise the Lord, uh, they do it by saying. Uh, even at the birth of Jesus, the angelic host said uh, what was on their minds. Uh, Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14 says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace goodwill to men. And so they were not singing, but they were saying. Uh, the only verse that I found that even comes close to saying uh, that they sing was in Job chapter 38 and verse 7, and it's the word sang. Uh, and in that verse, that means to shout out or to give a ringing cry. You say, well, what's the point to all this? Well, music is made up of two kinds of chords. There are minor chords and there are major chords. Minor chords make up uh, the music of sorrow and pain and suffering and bereavement. Uh, minor chords express uh, suffering and heartache and misery. Uh, many of the sounds of nature are in the minor chords of keys today. Uh, then there's the major chord. These are the chords of victory and exaltation and triumph and praise. And so we humans know about the struggles of life. Uh, we know about the touch of the master's hand. Uh, we know what it is to be redeemed by his grace, uh, lifted out of our sin and freed from prison and washed in the blood. Uh, we know uh, what it takes to have hope and then uh, to be given a new song. In uh, Psalms 40 and verse 1 through 3, it says, I wait patiently for the Lord. He inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Uh, and so we have something to sing about. We have something to praise the Lord about tonight. Uh, we that are saved have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Uh, our sins have been forgiven, past, present, and future. And we've been, uh, uh, our name's been written in the Lamb's book of life. And we have eternal life. And one of these days, the trump of God is going to sound and we're going to go meet the Lord in the air. The angels, on the other hand, have never had an experience with sin or redemption. Uh, all they know is glory and triumph and victory. Uh, they've never been given a song, uh, but we have. And so praise the Lord uh, that we have. But what they do uh, and what they say is exactly right. They declare uh, the worth of the Lamb of God. They praise Him for who He is. And one of these days, you and I are going to be up there, and we're going to praise Him as our Redeemer, as the blessed Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And then so secondly, you see there are created beings uh, that praise the Lamb. Uh, chapter uh, 5, verse number 13, And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing, and honor, and glory, and power, be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb forever and ever. 
listen, this is an amazing verse. Uh, while heaven is consumed with the praises of the Lord, and we're up there worshiping God and bowing down before Him, and the earth is busy ignoring God and continuing its slide into the flames of hell, uh, when this worship service breaks out in heaven, every creature in the universe joins in to praise the Lamb. Did you notice what it said? It said, in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as in the sea and all that therein. And he heard all of them praising him. Uh, you think about that. Every lost sinner, every devil, uh, demon of hell, even the devil himself, uh, will lift their voices together and they're going to give praise to the Lamb of God and they will, uh, they'll just not be able to help themselves. Because the Bible makes it very clear. Uh, they will bend the knee and they will lift their voices in praise. The Bible said that it would happen and it will. Uh, because the Bible is truth. Uh, Romans 14, 12 says, So then, every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Uh, that's saved, that's lost, that's all of us. Philippians 2, 9-11 says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Uh, so if you're watching this today and you say, I'm an atheist, I don't believe in God, it doesn't matter. One of these days you're going to bow the knee and you're going to confess that he is Jesus Christ and that he is Lord. Uh, one of these days you're lost, you're going to bow before him. At the great white throne judgment, you're going to confess that he is Jesus Christ and that he is Lord. Uh, you and I that are saved, uh, we are going to bow before him. Uh, and we're looking at that right here in chapters 4 and chapter 5, uh, where we bow down before him, we lay our crowns at his feet, and we worship him. What a day that will be uh, uh, when a denying, a God-denying, a God-rejecting world will begin to praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, we're all going to do that. And so you notice that they do not praise him for redemption uh, because they have not ever experienced that. They praise him for who he is. Uh, what a day when all of creation cannot contain itself and it begins to praise the Lord who made it and who redeemed it. And so I look forward to that day. And here's the thing. We don't have to wait till that day. We can praise him now. And we can give him praises and sing praises to his name uh, when we get up, during the middle of the day, at the end of the day, and before we go to bed. And then I want you to notice, thirdly, uh, the converted uh, beings are going to praise the Lamb. Verse number 14, And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and and ever. And so when all of this takes place, all these different creations and everybody begins to uh, praise the Lord, when that starts to take place, the beasts say amen. Uh, or more or less, they say, so it is and let it so be, Lord. Uh, when they join in, the 24 elders cannot contain themselves and they fall down before the Lamb in spontaneous open worship. And so, uh, as it says in verse number 14, And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Now, I don't know about you, uh, but I think we ought to sing praises to the Lamb every day. I don't think we ought to wait until we get to heaven. Uh, the Bible makes it very clear uh, that we are to sing praises to him, that we are to rejoice, that we are to worship him. Uh, one of my favorite psalms is Psalms 100. The Bible says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Uh, come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Now, these verses tell me that you and I ought to be giving uh, God thanks. We ought to be singing praises to him. We ought to thank him for what he's done for us. We ought to bless his name because the Lord is good. Uh, and where would you be today without his mercy, and without his grace? And we know that his truth endureth to all generations. John is writing this some 2,000 years ago, and yet this generation today is still reading it, still understanding and rejoicing in it. And all I can say is just praise the Lord, hallelujah, and amen. 
And so uh, it may be that you just want to praise him for who he is and for all that he's done for you. Uh, you ought to be able to do that. You ought to do that every day. Every day you get up in the morning, you ought to praise the Lord. You made it through another night and you have another day to live. And then you ought to give that day to the Lord. Uh, you ought to ask the Lord to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Bible says to be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit so that we can get through the day. Uh, the Bible says that we need to walk in the Spirit so that we'll not walk in the flesh. And so if you're filled with the Spirit, then you'll be walking in the Spirit and you'll be able to sing praises to the Lord. Uh, it may be tonight that you're watching this and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Uh, there's never been a time when you've come to him and confessed your sins and asked him to forgive you and to come into your life and save you. Jesus will do that right now if you'll call on him and ask him. Uh, he sent his son. Uh, God sent his son to die for our sins. And Jesus came and uh, he was born of a virgin. And then he hung on the cross and then he died. Then he was buried. Then he rose again. And now he's seated at the right hand of God in heaven. Uh, but he died for you. He shed his blood for you. And if you will come to him by faith and ask him to forgive you of your sins and to come into your life and save you, God will do that. And so uh, this finishes chapter number five. Now next week, we're going to begin chapter number six. Chapter number six, we begin to break the seals of the book uh, that the Lamb of God is worthy to open. And we're going to begin to see the wrath of Almighty God as it begins to pour out. Uh, while this is going on on the earth, you and I are going to be in heaven, uh, going through the judgment seat of Christ, followed by the marriage supper of the Lamb. And so we have so much to look forward to that are saved. But in the meantime, uh, we need to be about the business of sharing the gospel with a lost and dying world uh, so that people uh, can get saved and come and join us in this uh, adventure that we're going to spend with the Lord for the rest of our lives. And so... Uh, Tell somebody about Jesus today. Share the gospel with them. There are a lot of people during this pandemic that are looking for answers, uh, that are looking for hope and looking for help. Uh, I can't think of a better uh, hope or help to give them than the Lord Jesus Christ and to introduce them to our Savior. And so I want to thank you for being with us tonight. We're going to close in prayer and then uh, we'll give you some information about where you can go see this service. Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful and thankful for your love for us tonight. We're thankful for Jesus Christ who came and shed his blood and who redeemed us back to you. We're thankful for heaven tonight and what we have to look forward to. We're thankful for our loved ones who have gone before us to know that they were absent from the body and that they are present with the Lord. And Father, I pray tonight for this message as it goes out that some lost soul might see it and that through this gospel message they might come to know you as their personal Savior. I pray that you'll continue to be with us during this time of uh, separation. I pray that you will be with our president and our leadership and our country. And Father, I just pray that uh, soon we'll be able to get back to the uh, in-house services where we can greet one another and, and fellowship once again. But until that time, God, I pray you'll keep everyone safe. We ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, shortly after this is done, we will upload this to our YouTube uh, page so that those that may not uh, have Facebook or cannot watch it live here uh, can go watch it. You can share with them if they'll go to YouTube and search Ambassador Baptist Church, uh, Weatherford, Texas. They'll be able to find our channel and they'll be able to watch all the messages that we've been recording here. Uh, if you do get Facebook and have watched this, you can share this on your page uh, so some of your friends can see it as well. Uh, my wife shared it on her page Sunday, and one of our neighbors across the way uh, was able to watch the service. And so we don't know how many people we might be able to reach through this, but I know the Lord uh, said his word would not come back void. And so whatever we can do to get the gospel out to reach this world, we'll do it. Uh, may God bless you and you have a good evening, a good rest of the week. And Lord willing, we'll see you back here this coming Sunday uh, at 1045 where we'll have another uh, live stream service in our morning worship. God bless you and have a good night.